Good evening. Once again, I'm Stephanie Rule, live from Los Angeles. And I start with one question. Are you buckled up? You better be, because Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen just warned of a new and earlier drop-dead date for the debt ceiling. Yellen now says the country could run out of cash to pay its bills on June 1st. That is one month from tonight, if Congress doesn't raise the debt limit. Default would mean disaster for our, our economy. Everyone would feel the effects. Secretary Yellen's warning came late today in a letter to top lawmakers saying this, quote, it is imperative that Congress act as soon as possible. Tonight, President Biden invited the top four congressional leaders to the White House May 9th to find some way to avoid default. Last week, of course, the GOP-led House passed a bill that raised the debt limit, but it included steep spending cuts. Biden said absolutely no to that. And tonight, he and McCarthy are still in a standoff. We will not pass the debt ceiling that just raises it without doing something about our debt. We pay our bills, and we should do so without reckless hostage taking from some of the mega Republicans in Congress. Meanwhile, the administration is also dealing with the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. Regulators seized First Republic Bank, then they sold it to stronger hands, J.P. Morgan Chase whose CEO now says this banking crisis is over, but a lot of people are wondering, could other banks fall next? We're also following the latest in a civil rape trial against former President Donald J. Trump. His accuser, E. Jean Carroll, was back on the stand for a second day of intense cross-examination. NBC's Laura Jarrett has that story. Joe Tacopina, an attorney for the former president, doubling down on the defense theory that Carol made up her sexual assault accusation against Mr. Trump to gain notoriety. President Playing this old interview on CNN for the jury, where she describes bumping into Mr. Trump at Bergdorf Goodman and helping him pick out a gift. He was going to get some lingerie. And I am just like, oh, well, I can dine out forever on this story. Today, Carol told the jury it was such a New York story and such a happy story. And then, of course, it turned tragic. She says the former president raped her in the dressing room, an allegation the defense again tried to undermine Monday by saying she never called the police, despite having told others in her advice column to do so. Carol explaining in court, I'm a member of the silent generation. Women like me were taught and trained to keep our chins up and to not complain. Takapina also confronting Carol with old posts on Facebook years after she says she was assaulted, where she calls herself a, quote, massive fan of Mr. Trump's TV show, The Apprentice. But Carol told the jury she also made several jokes about him. Tomorrow, we're going to be keeping a close eye on a key hearing in the Senate Judiciary Committee after a series of alarming reports involving Supreme Court justices conveniently failing to disclose financial conflicts of interest. Lawmakers will hold a hearing on the court's ethics. We're going forward, and I think we're going to produce a bipartisan code of ethics. The highest court in the land should not have the lowest standard of ethics in the federal government. They better take this seriously. The integrity of the court and the reputation of the court is at stake. Take a deep breath and smile, boys and girls, because Mattel launched its first ever Barbie with Down syndrome last week. And as you can see, it is already making a big difference, and it's a huge hit. The doll wears a blue and yellow dress with butterflies, the colors and symbols of Down syndrome awareness, and ankle orthotics, which some children with Down syndrome use. And we have got a very special guest and a Barbie critic and expert with us to talk about it all. My dear friend, Miss Mia Armstrong. She's an actress. She's a voiceover artist. She's a self-advocate. Her mom, Cara, a disability advocate and an entrepreneur. And my friend, Lisa McKnight, executive vice president and global head of Barbie and all dolls at Mattel. I want to hear about the business, but I've got to hear. <laughs> you, you could be, this might not be good for you from the critic first. All right, Mia. <laughs> Barbie is out. Wow. She's Barbie with Down syndrome. What do you think of her? She's really beautiful, and the colors are really cool. Have, have you gotten one yet? Not yet. Not yet? Yes. Lisa, what made you make this decision? Oh, we have been um, wanting to create a doll with Down syndrome for a while now. In fact, this doll has been in the works for over a year. This doll is part of um, one of Barbie's lines called the Fashionista line, which is the most diverse doll line in the world. We've made incredible progress over the past few years to um, ensure that as many kids as possible are represented 
in this line so they can see themselves in the line, because we know how important that is, especially for young kids, to be included, to see themselves. And we couldn't be more proud of our Down syndrome Barbie. Kara, you are a disability advocate. What does seeing a doll like this mean for children with disabilities? It's life changing for us, for our community, and for me personally as a mom. You know, when you receive a prenatal diagnosis, there's so much fear that surrounds that. And I remember 12 years ago just sitting and being so prayed, and my husband coming up to me and saying, You know, Kara, maybe you need to look at yourself and maybe you need to ask yourself a question. Are you just upset about this diagnosis because you have a son that's like Ken and you're not getting Barbie? He literally you're kidding. Said, no, he said those words to me. And it made me look inside myself and dig deep and look at my own biases. Now we're sitting here 12 years later and there is a Barbie with Down syndrome. So there's been incredible progress and in what it means to our family and our community. I, I can't emphasize enough how life-changing this has been for us. Well, Lisa and the Barbie team realized that Barbie needed a little Mia in there. <laughs> Lisa, the doll is already sold out everywhere. What does that tell you as a business? Well, it is just incredibly exciting, encouraging. It's so heartwarming. I mean, that's the most important thing is to hear stories from Mia and you, Kara, um, about how this doll has affected you and impacted you. But yes, we're thrilled about the business. Um, it was the number one doll on Amazon last week. It is selling out everywhere. And what I'm thrilled about is we know we're onto something and we're going to be creating a broader line in the future. What does that mean? We'll be adding more dolls with different um, ethnicities. Um, Ken might be in the mix too. Um, you heard it here first, but we're excited about expanding this offering um, because we know it's, it's purposeful um, and it also is great for, for the business. Mia, even before this Barbie, you've been a fan. Why do you like Barbie so much? Probably because she inspires me the most, and she's brave and confident, just like me. Wow. She's brave and confident, just like you. How does that make you feel? To hear I'm... Mia, at 12 years old, speak like this, how she presents herself on live television at 8 o'clock at night, uh, it's extraordinary. I'm just thankful that she was born at this moment of, in time. You know, we were talking about this new generation coming up. There are absolute social justice warriors, and the world is starting to turn and see people with different abilities in the light that they should be seen, and we're just so thankful for that. Mia, you have visited us on this show before, and people have been saying to me for the last year, when is Mia coming back? So I'm glad you're here. What is your message for viewers watching tonight, for boys and girls who are just like you who might think, I might not get to go on television? What do you want them to know? Down syndrome is not a disability. It's just a different ability. And... Yeah. That's a great message. Yes. You're also a world traveler. You just came from Iceland, didn't you? What can you tell us about that trip? It was so... First of all, I'm glad seeing you in person. <laughs> and it was so beautiful, Steph. Wait, well, you know what, Mia? You are so beautiful as well. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Kara, I'm here. I'm glad you're here as well. And Lisa, thank you for everything thank you. that you do. Thank you a so new much. Barbie. Barbie, try to find another woman who is a doctor, a lawyer, an actress, a teacher, an activist, ballerina. sometimes a girl, a ballerina. <laughs> that Barbie, she is everything. Ladies, thank you so much. All of you in pink tonight. The last thing before we go tonight, the first Monday in May. Tonight, celebrities, fashion insiders, and many other of the influential set posed on the iconic Met Gala steps for fashion's biggest night and the opening of the Costume Institute's latest exhibit. This year, it is a tribute to designer Karl Lagerfeld. Over the weekend, though, there was another slightly or a lot less glamorous red carpet, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. The event may be best known for roasts, but at its core, it is a celebration of the freedom of press as President Biden noted in his speech. Jill, Kamala, Doug, and I, members of our administration, are here to send a message to the country and, quite frankly, to the world. The free press is a pillar, maybe the pillar, of a free society, not the enemy. It is absolutely consequential and essential. After all, I believe in the First Amendment not just because my good friend Jimmy Madison wrote it. <laughs> the president also advocated for the release of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich and other Americans who were detained overseas. 
Most importantly, though, the dinner raises money for the White House Correspondents Association scholarships. Plus, it is an excuse for all of us to get together and show off our best black tie, which has resulted in many, many best dress lists. But of course, for yours truly, I made only one, George Santos's best dressed. Go figure. Better luck next year, Steph Rule.